the home of the common Joe and the common Sally in the know, even more so than all those media talking heads. Other than the Kansas game being a much-needed victory for Oklahoma to get off the three-game losing streak schneid that they were on, I think that this game was actually a pretty big learning lesson and very important going forward. People may not look at it in the future as a big win, but you could probably look back at this game and say, hey, that was somewhat of a turning point. Let's talk about it. Well, well, well. How's it going after today, guys and gals in sporty land? This is, once again, an episode of the OCF. That's the Outlaw of College Football. That's me, JPC, also known as Jesse Paul Clark, on Facebook. Spelt J-S-S-E without the I. Also on Twitter, at OCF Productions. Now, getting right to it. I've been mean to touch on this topic for a while, but I had a lot of controversial stuff I was dealing with with Alabama and Tennessee this week. So now we're going to get to it. I think that this victory over Kansas means more than people might realize. This was a game that got them off the schneid, first of all. They had a three-game losing streak, and they were looking pretty horrific, especially on the defensive side of the ball for the most part. And in the Texas game, it all fell apart. But as we've seen with this game, Dilly Gabriel is sort of like a personality Sort of like Quinn Ewers with Texas. When Quinn Ewers is in the game, that the entire team seems to run a lot smoother. It seems like um, everybody's a little more confident, have a, a, a bigger pep in their step, so to speak. And I think the thing, same thing goes for Dylan Gabriel in Oklahoma. Now, he went 29-42 for 403 yards and two touchdowns. It's not like he threw 60 or 70 passes to get that 403 yards. The man was on point. Not only that, but he had two 100-yard receivers with Mims and Willis. And on top of that, even the rushing game was going. Just like I said, good resonates. When you're around good, it usually resonates, and it makes everybody else better around you. As Eric Gray rushed for 176 yards on 20 carries for an 8.8-yard average of two touchdowns. Now, the defense is still seems like the issue right now. And people are like, well, how can that be with Brett Venables being such a great defensive mind? Well, like I said before, man, um, that side of the ball has been taught really the wrong way to do things for quite some time by Alex Grinch and Lincoln Riley, in my opinion. And it's going to take a while to grind all that out of them. But it could also be the defensive coordinator. But like I said, the uh, jury's still out. I'm not ready to ax any coaches, especially Brent Venables, um, Ted Roof. If he's going to get rid of somebody, I think he would be the first guy to probably go. Ted Roof has been hit or miss as a defense coordinator, sort of like Kevin Steele in a way. Kevin Steele got a head coaching job at Baylor, and Ted Roof was a head coach at Duke, and both of them failed miserably as head coaches, and now they've been journeyman defensive coordinators for quite some time, I think, looking for that next opportunity, which isn't coming because they're just not consistent enough in their um, trade they're in. Now, Ted Roof has had some pretty good defenses at times, as, as Kevin Steele has, but that's the problem. You just never would know what you're going to get with Ted Roof. And Ted's getting a little up in age as well. But like I said, the jury's still out on Ted. I'm not willing, I'm not ready to ax Ted either, but I'm just saying down the road, if something like, if someone were to get be gotten rid of, I don't think you need to get rid of Brent Venables. It needs to be uh, probably Ted Roof. Um, Oklahoma has an off week this week, and I think it come at the exact best time. 
Yeah, I don't think you ever want to go into an off week on a three-game losing streak. I mean, sometimes you don't have a choice. Sometimes you have a losing streak, and there's your off week. But in this case, it worked out pretty good for Oklahoma and that they got Dylan Gabriel back, got a little bit, a little bit of confidence back in themselves going into the off week. And uh, I think it can serve them well going forward, and they can have a decent year, hopefully. Uh, Iowa State's got a pretty good defense. Uh, they've pretty much held opponents to, um, I'm not sure about the average, but I know Iowa State's got a really good defense. They held Quinn Ewers in Texas to 24 points in Austin. So this would be a big test for Dylan Gable. We'll see whether his um, resonating aura can get him past a pretty good defense. If that happens, <coughs> I think it's going to snowball into more confidence. And like I said, the only thing going forward, it might derail Oklahoma again and cause them to lose maybe a fourth, maybe even a fifth game, would be the fact that the defense still hasn't um, still hasn't gelled together quite as well as the offense has. And finishing up the year, they got the game in Norman against Baylor. Then they're at West Virginia, have Oklahoma State at home, and then Texas Tech on the road in Lubbock. Like I said, if they can beat Iowa State, I think this is game on this game is on Thursday night. I think they can beat Baylor. Baylor hasn't looked that good this year. West Virginia, they're hit or miss. I think they can beat West Virginia. Oklahoma State, we'll see how how good Oklahoma State is this weekend when they play Texas. Texas Tech, hit or miss. The only game on this schedule that I see that y'all might lose would be Oklahoma State, and I'm not too sure about that. I'm, I'm my, my opinion still, my jury is still out with Oklahoma State until I see how they do recovering from a loss and coming up against Texas. If they beat Texas, I'm going to have some issues. But if Oklahoma gets out of this year after the horrific stretch they went through and the bad luck that they had with Dylan Gable getting injured and whatnot, if y'all finish this year with only four losses, I would call that a big win, especially with the great recruiting classes that you got coming in. Now, sometimes some of them recruits will drop off if they see a team losing. Hopefully that doesn't happen with Oklahoma's recruiting class, and you guys can secure that recruiting class, which right now is number three. And that's pretty damn good. If they finish at number three, I think that'll be the highest all-time ranking for an Oklahoma recruiting class since they started ranking recruiting classes so i just wanted to get in here and touch on that to let you guys and gals know out there in sooner nation that this win over kansas uh can be a little bit of a turning point and that people probably won't remember it in the future when oklahoma's doing bigger and better things in my opinion but you need to come back to it one day and say you know what that was the point right there they had done lost three games in a row but brent venables rallied the troops dylan gable came back and they didn't give up. They didn't roll over. They pulled out a win when everybody had given up on them. And that's all I got to say about that. If you don't mind, there's a little hard option down here at the bottom of this video. Click on that. Throw me a few dollars in the coffer so I can get off of this YouTube teat. And as always, KMCA to all the other teams. Class is now officially dismissed.